Today's episode, it's all about the draft. We give you our predictions because it is here. It is finally time talking about, you know, just a little bit of these fantasy ramifications if players go certain places. Who's going to fall into the second round? Who's going to trade back into the first? All of those answers and more on today's episode. Make sure you leave us some comments, subscribe, and enjoy. Welcome. To the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. The Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to Draft Day. Oh, yeah, brother. (laughs) Finally. The speculation can end. We can get some answers. Well, not until this podcast is over. Oh, no, this will be riddled with speculation. (laughs) We're making our draft predictions right here on the show today. Uh, Mike is back in town. Chillo. Jason's. Still got uh, the Zima, hello, as, as we call oh, it. Oh, the beverage. <laughs> yes, yes, uh, I l- love a good Zima. Yeah, um, and and we're here. Bijan watch begins. Oh man, I Jason has been just consuming mock draft content. I mean, it's not like we're not involved in the excitement. It's just that it pales in comparison to Jason's level of of kind of. I think you've given yourself over to the draft gods who yes. have who have kind of absorbed you. I need to apologize to my family. Like I you know, I take my kids to school in the morning. It's a it's a pretty long drive and usually we're listening to music that they like. No, nope, not right now. We're Ooh. listening to boring draft talk, speculation, rumors. You will wow. you will stay quiet in this hey. car and you will let me listen and could consume more content hey kids kids have you ever heard of john mcclain from uh from houston yeah because i have <gasps> that yeah, is so uh, i remember being in the car with my grandfather and him refusing to allow music it was talk radio i mean for him very political man so it was that but you're just when you're that age mm-hmm. in a car and it's talk, and you're stuck and with it's, it it's, it's, it's a nightmare talking. <laughs> So oh, I, I, I literally told my kids on the drive to That's school torture. today, I told them, I go, congratulations, yeah. this is over. This is the last day. No, you- that's and that's a lie. You lied to your kids because it's not over. If yeah. Bijan goes to the wrong place, they have you, they, you'll be apologizing some more. Yeah, well, that will be for just my anger. Yeah. Did you, Jason, did you pick Bijan's destination with your heart or with your head? With my heart. Okay. (laughs) Yes, sir. That one is a heart pick. So we have a ton of uh, draft predictions to make on the show today. The draft this evening. Very excited about it. And then we'll have a live stream tomorrow. Uh, Recapping round one. You can get Jason's reactions uh, on the live stream, which I think is 6 Eastern. Is that right, Brooksy? Oh, yeah. And then um, rounds two and three tomorrow. So there'll be a lot of exciting names going off the board tomorrow as well for the fantasy football universe yes there'll be trades tonight that nobody saw coming and players going in places they didn't expect and um it just happens every year i actually did get the leaked script from the nfl Oh, that's right there is a script so my picks are 100 percent correct oh i'm sure yeah. yeah did you write the script for the nfl no they just leaked it okay. and i found it and i uh it's just re- laying around <laughs> it's just on the ground by my desk for some reason <laughs> Mike, uh, we we made the announcement earlier, but I'm going to need a uh, mic trumpet. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, It is Ultimate Draft Week. As we celebrate the NFL Draft, we have a very special giveaway going on, some Ultimate Draft Week prizes that we're handing out, dishing out a signed Jalen Waddell jersey, a signed DK Metcalf jersey, and then the most important of them all, a listener league spot is up for grabs. Let me be clear. The way you can be entered to win any of these three prizes is have a pre-order in for the 2023 Ultimate Draft Kit by this Sunday, April 30th. UltimateDraftKit.com is where you go to do that. And anyone that has ordered up to this point is automatically entered. So I've seen that question pop up again. Anytime we do a giveaway, if you've, you know, ordered beforehand, 
you're in good shape. But uh, yes, big giveaway going on. Come play with us in the Listener League, Ultimate Draft Kit. Dot com. I, I, we're not going to get into the news. We're going to get right into the draft predictions. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind a quick reaction from Mike on the Aaron Rodgers news. Mm, yes. Uh, simply because you were not here when it broke live on the air. Uh, we were, we were in the news section when the, when it came down, but you know, you obviously read the news that day. Did you have any kind of overarching thoughts, excitement, uh, what was your takeaway from the move? Uh, I would say that my takeaway, I thought Green Bay ended up doing very well for themselves with, with the draft compensation that they got. Uh, the Jets, man, <laughs> I I understand when you have a roster where you feel like the roster can compete right now, so we need to make something happen. But to forfeit the that the, the gap that they give up in the first round is not like a tiny gap, especially when you have all the NFL teams are like, we only have like great first round grades on about, you know, 15 or so players. So the, the blue chip players are going to be running out by, uh, by the time the jets get to pick. And then for a player that might be done after this year, it is a huge gamble, but for fantasy football, nothing that hasn't already been said It's it's nice that it's done and you can kind of that anxiety of, well, what if it doesn't happen? That could go away. Garrett Wilson to the moon. Um, and the Jets just overall, that uh, they could try and rework some things for the wide receiver room. But overall, just you know, really, really excited to see does Aaron Rodgers still have enough left to take Garrett Wilson to be a top five guy. It's crazy to me that they, you know, assuming that Aaron Rodgers plays this year, it will be a first rounder next year. And a second round, sixty five percent of the snaps, right? I think, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you know, as so long as he's not injured for they the season, they want it to be a first rounder, absolutely, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they want to trade a first rounder, a first round pick swap this year, a second rounder this year at, for the one year chance of Aaron Rodgers. Like, do well, the do Lamar Jackson, right? Give your two firsts for a young stud prime MVP. But what gotta, are you doing? Did we get the contract? I don't stuff. Uh, I heard Rogers that I heard they were they're reworking the deal. They're reworking. Yeah, they it. are. They're they're opening up a bunch of cap space, something like forty three million dollars in cap space. Um, yeah, I, I I don't think that the Lamar situation is all that meets the eye. Like, I don't think we have all the details sure. there. I think the the fact that we were sitting there thinking any team can just grab him, but then Odell Beckham goes there under the pretense that he's re-signing. Like, the back channel world might not have been as simple as is is that um i will say this i tweeted this yesterday and i look at the jets deal through the same lens there have been 26 quarterbacks drafted in the top 15 picks over the last 10 years and i threw them on my twitter but there's not a lot of like i guess we have time to do this i'm going to read the name i just want you to say happy or sad okay okay with okay. the pick with the pick okay okay because you i'm going to make it binary because in in in, in okay. football, I can, think quarterback decisions are very binary. It's can you win a title? Can I use vocal inflection? You may. Okay. You can say perfect. Good question. That, perfect. That's that's perfect. the nuance that is acceptable. Uh, Andrew Luck, happy, Hap, happy. <laughs> uh, Robert Griffin, uh, had. So that's I mean, the answer is sad. 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 But Tannehill, sad. 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 Yeah. Uh, Bortles. Sad. Sad. Winston. Sad. Sad. Mariota. Sad. Sad. Goff. Happy. Whoa. <laughs> Sad? <laughs> Carson Wentz. Sad. Oh, angry, furious. Uh, Trubisky. Sad. Sad. Mahomes. <laughs> Happy! <laughs> uh, Watson. Sad. Sad. Mayfield. Sad. Sad. Darnold. Sad. Sad. Josh Allen. Happy. Rosen. Sad. Kyler. Happy. Uh, Jones. Sad. Daniel Jones. Sad. Uh, I'll give a happy. And then Haskins didn't work out uh, as a starter. Sad there. Burrow. Happy. Of course, happy. Tua. Ooh. Happy. S happy. Yeah. Sappy. Okay. <laughs> Herbert. Happy. Happy. Lawrence. Happy. happy. Wilson. <laughs> uh, Lance. Sad. <laughs> Justin Fields. 
TBD. Yeah. So so listen, there wasn't there wasn't an overwhelming amount. No, of, that was that was a bad hit rate. And that is all the top fifteen picks. The reason people take the shot on them is because you can't win at the NFL level without taking a shot on them. And so right. this contract for Rodgers, this trade, it's a form of giving yourself the whatever that was six and twenty six, seven and twenty six chance at actually being able to win a ball game. Um, the first clips of him entering the facility came through this morning, reunited with Nathaniel Hackett. I do think it's going to work out for the Jets. Reunited with my dude, Alan Lazard? Yeah, I, Let's I, think, go. I think it's going to work out. But, but we talked about this, Jason, on the Tuesday show. It's a tough division. Buffalo, Miami, New England. Uh, it's, it's a gamble, but it's a gamble that, look, what was their other option? Take Lamar out of it. You know, that's – might not have been a real option. Okay, so take now the other with, option out. No, they, they, uh, no I, I said it I might agree. not have been okay. a real option. Right. Yeah, okay. we, we had heard all along. It's like My, some I, teams I, may not want to go through everything of wasting the time of the contract negotiation because they knew that Baltimore will go. Oh yeah, we're gonna match. Thank thank you for doing all the work for us. We're going to take our player back. Yeah, now. I mean, uh, for me, if I was the Jets, my other option is definitely do this after the draft. Just hold out because now you've got better draft capital this year which is the one single year you know you'll have with Aaron Rodgers, have your second round, have the pick so 13. So your, your advice is to have won the trade better? Yeah. Okay. But <laughs> at quarterback, outside of Aaron Rodgers, is there an option that you were happy no. with? No. No. And they would they would have been stuck in purgatory because the team is good. Zach Wilson is not the answer, but they still would have ended up winning, you know, seven-plus games, and then they wouldn't. I've had a top pick for a quarterback anyways. All right. Do we have do we have a drop for our draft predictions, Brooks? Did you did you and the team Yeah, we're we got we're, we're playing a game, right? Is that what we're doing? I want to play a game. I feel like when we did this last year, somebody won. Who 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 won last year? Jason won, but it's more of who lost is usually how we do it. Who lost? I think Mike yeah, yeah, yeah that's good, fair. good research. Um, that's fair. So we are back into it. We're going to predict destinations <laughs> for five quarterbacks, three running backs, six wide receivers, three tight ends, and then we'll see who ends up on top. I I imagine if Jason has the real script, it'll be him. Uh, he's never been afraid to Belichick a contest. Yeah, I will cheat the heck out of this thing. Uh, but let's start with Bryce Young, a, a place where we will not find disparity. No, it's the it's the one known pick in this draft. He's going to Carolina. He will be a Panther. That is clear and obvious. The betting markets have it at 99%. We're all going Panthers. Yes, Bryce Young to the Panthers. Let's, now it gets interesting. Yes. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes we do this and we end up with a lot of consensus agreement. Sometimes we don't. Uh, year over year, it's been, you know, it's been different. At least on first glance, there's we all have very different destinations for these quarterbacks, which is going to make draft day even more fun tonight. Will Levis, I have him going to the Houston Texans at the number two overall pick. You're you're buying the buying what they're selling out I, there. I'm not, I'm I'm not. I'm, I'm the not, markets. I should say. Yeah, I, I look. Will Levis was in there for me to the Texans a few days ago, and the reason is because they have to get a quarterback. I mean, the the Texans cannot. With this new head coach and their process here, moving on from Deshaun Watson, go into this season without extreme confidence at the quarterback position that they are moving forward with a franchise guy. I think their decision is going to be Will Levis with the number two pick, and so that's what I'm going with. Yeah, I I changed my pick this morning uh, based on John McClain, 47-year veteran cover, covering the NFL draft, longtime Houston Texan writer, his seventh and final mock draft. Has the Texans taking Will Levis? But I went back and I said, no, I'm going to stick to my guns. And I've got Will Levis going. To the script. Stick to the script. Yes, the script that I found uh, on the floor. Uh, going with the chalk of the last couple months, which is that the Colts like Will Levis, and I think he'll go there at four. I'm confused. So you ch you changed your pick because you read a very informed beat reporter said that the quarterback was going to the Texans. Mm-hmm. But and, then I looked at the script. And then you changed it back. Yeah. And then I was like, so, oh, yeah. So you changed it, gave us a piece of information, and then said, but I did nothing with this information. I reverted. Well, see, what happened is last year. <laughs> I'm just no, saying, I'm so – why did you I'm share glad you're, that? I'm glad you're back, Mike. I'm glad you're back. This is good. 
The oh, bear didn't have these kinds of insights. I, wa- I wanted the, the Foot Clan to know the information um, that John McLean okay, shared. Gotcha. That's that's why I shared it, because I think it, w- <laughs> Andy's not- pick is a good one. Okay. Uh, yeah. And it, it it is also, I think, the betting favorite right now. It is. Uh, for Will Levis to go number two, it, it, it seems insane that a team that needs a quarterback that's drafting at number two would not take a quarterback. But I'm I'm uh, I'm going to say they don't. Yeah, I I agree. I think it's insane because there's no guarantee you'll be back there. Like you, you might win the final game of the season on the final drive and knock yourself out of prime position with the number one pick. Uh, I'm going to send Banana Rama to the Raiders. Because I believe that <laughs> that uh, he should not be drafted in the top five, and I will not allow it to happen in my mock. Uh, by the way, I need to set the record straight now that we actually have the data because uh, it was being done during the show as opposed to before it. Jason, and I, Jason and I tied last year oh, in the NFL okay. draft predictions. So there was one loser mm. and two winners. Yes. Yeah, because that – look. The, the markets are giving you really good information, but there's just sometimes you got to take a stand right. and say Will Levis should not be a top five pick. And he should not be. Uh, C.J. Stroud. Again, I will take a stand. And this is Justin Fields all over again where, I, to me, he was he's a pro-ready quarterback talking about C.J. Stroud. I think he should go number two. The, and I'm saying this is Justin Fields again because we had, you know, a couple years back it was the Trey Lance at number three, uh, kind of like a late stock riser, and I thought it was insane to take Trey Lance there and not take Justin Fields. That's all still actually TBD on who the, the quarterback pick should have been there. But I think that the Texans should take C.J. Stroud, so I'm saying that they will because it's the right thing to do. All right, well, uh, Jason – in my uh, version of the leaked script, the Cardinals trade out to the Titans. and uh, they, uh, Okay, they, so you don't have him falling. No, I don't have C.J. Stroud falling. I have him being selected at three by the Titans. And I'm going to go with C.J. Stroud to the Indianapolis Colts, either via Cardinals stuck at three, taking a defensive player, or... The Colts moving up a spot, which is what I actually think but, will happen. Let's say, but for the bonus point, which one are you going to lock in? For the bonus point, Ooh. I think the Colts will swap one spot with the Cardinals, make okay. it a very clean. It's the kind of draft day deal for a top pick that I can see actually happening. It's a low percentage chance for those deals to happen on draft day as opposed to well before them. But I think that that will be the way the Colts secure their guy. They'll be very enthusiastic when he doesn't go number two. The the Cardinals and Will Levis takes uh, goes to the Texans. The Cardinals better have so many phones ready because if C.J. Stroud doesn't go number two, I've sent them a, a whole pal, a pallet good. full because mm-hmm. they need a room full of operators to manage that many calls in what twenty minutes or whatever it's it is like you get 10. per pick. It's ten minutes. Isn't I it? yeah fifteen. That Maybe 15 for the first round and 10 for the, the other round? Maybe, but th- their phone will blow up if Stroud doesn't go too. Well, let's move on here. We've we've got uh, some live picks here with Levis and Stroud, and we've got them again with Anthony Richardson coming in. Um, I'm sending him to the Raiders. I think he drop. <laughs> I think he drops. All Raiders picks must be declared. I'm sending them to the Raiders. I'm sending him to the Raiders. I think, <laughs> I, think this, I had the Seahawks in here at five. I think the Seahawks are so just – I think they're deft. That's a good word, right? Deft, yeah. Yeah, yes. they're deft in these drafts. They take – whether it's Jalen Carter, whether Will Anderson drops here, whether it's Tyree Wilson, I think the Seahawks will resist the urge to put the project on the bench behind Geno, and they will go get a piece that helps them win a potentially vulnerable division outside yes. of San Francisco this year. So uh, grab a wild card spot. I, I'm going to send them to the Raiders because – it, to me, that just makes sense. I think the Raiders want a quarterback more than people, uh, more than than it's being put out there. Uh, I I think that makes so much sense. And ironically, I have the Seahawks taking Anthony Richardson for the same reason, which is my belief in Anthony Richardson. I I think that the Seahawks are a very smart, well run organization, and when they've got the chance at number five to grab someone with the physical tools, and it's the perfect situation, right? You don't need Anthony Richardson for a year or even two. You've got Geno. I think they capitalize on that opportunity and take him. Mike, where do you have Mr. Richardson? I mean, uh, Anthony Richardson, 
I mean, we we know that the T has to be off the charts because this dude is just an absolute kneecap it, breaker, an elite athlete. He's he's built like a T. His shoulders yeah. are so wide <laughs> yes. that he is a T. And the high T move for that type of player, he's got to go to the Detroit Lions. And Anthony Testosterone. I I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that Richardson, again, this is me just sticking to my guns of I don't think he should be a top five pick. He should be a first rounder. So I think that he can drop a bit and maybe Detroit pounces just a few spots to move up and go get him. Mike sticking to his guns, yeah. Mahoney. Yes. Here. Yes, I am. Hinden Hooker, the last quarterback we're going to project here. Let's let Jason kick this one off. Yeah, uh, I don't think the Texans can leave without a quarterback. And if they like Hooker, they're they're at twelve, which is one of those spots that he's almost guaranteed to be there. I have him. Wow, twelve! I have him taking him at twelve. Ooh, I know the script when I read is, it, I was like, "This is a crazy." Script. What a twist! That is spicy. No. So spicy that I have him going at eleven to the Titans. What? To the what Titans. Is, what did I miss? What? <laughs> What did I miss while I was gone? I think I think teams in this position are um, wow. You know, Tennessee got one more year of Tannehill if you need it. Hinden Hooker can get healthy. I, look, look, I I am here for it. I just didn't realize that that Hendon Hooker had shot up to the top of the first round. A lot while has I was happened gone. since you were gone, Mike. <laughs> A lot I, has I, happened. I only missed a few days. I have him going to the Seahawks at twenty. Not at not at five. Maybe at twenty. It was more of I'm, I'm looking, maybe at 37. I'm looking at the guys, uh, the teams, I should say, in, that are in the early part of the second round that can move back in to the end of the first, get that fifth round option, and like the the Seahawks trading up and getting the Kansas City pick. I think that that would be a great move for them, and then Hooker can sit on the bench while Geno's there for the if you, for the year. If you do get the fifth round option with Hinden Hooker, assuming that you're going to use that, he will be 36 years old <laughs> when his rookie I was contract go 47, is, is but... over. Um, <laughs> all right, we're going to take a break. Come back with the running backs. Well, it's time. It's the this was my most difficult prediction. I think maybe it, all of ours. Yeah, it, it, which is insane because you're like, if anything's happening, Bijan Robbins is going to get drafted in the first round. By who? I, dude, I, we, I have no idea. This morning, Jason and I went through probably picks six or eight through 25, trying to just quickly react to those teams and whether they were possible destinations for Bijan. They all kind of were. I mean, it was it was difficult, and, and the problem with the Bijan situation is you have fantasy football excitement that certainly has elevated his status to a different level in the fantasy community than the NFL community, not that he's not highly sought after. But if he goes in the top 10, you're, you're kicking against the trend that the NFL has taken with these running backs, and even in the teens, you're kind of doing that, where guys like Najee... Um, Harris were, were later um, in the 20s. So I, I, I do think there's a wide range of, of places where he could go. And and then there's places I want to see him go for entertainment value. There there are serious mock drafts that have him going f from 8 to 30. And all of them are reasonable. He could absolutely go anywhere in this first round. I Say it with me. He needs to go Atlanta, Chicago, Philadelphia. He has to go in those three picks because if he doesn't, then his landing spot. <laughs> to be spot, clear, that would be the, the eight, uh, nine, ten. eight, nine, ten. If he beyond gets, that, we're recording Jason. <laughs> oh man, if he gets past Philly at ten, it's a nightmare scenario because then the next most likely destinations would be fourteen, sixteen, and eighteen. Well, don't leave Houston out at twelve. No, I would love that. I'm fine with that. Please, Houston, take him at 12. But the bad destinations of New England, the Washington Manders, and the Detroit Lions, I would hate, hate, hate those destinations. And I think one of those three teams would select him if he's there. So 8, 9, 10, baby. Come on. And I'm going to start us off with my heart. Just go right at the top. Go 8 to Atlanta. Come on, Atlanta. Three years in a row, take a top 10 offensive weapon. Mike and I have the same destination. Oh, do you? Yes. The New England Patriots. Oh, I hate you guys. At 14. 
you have uh, look, Green Bay just moved up ahead of them. Jets are right behind them. New England at fourteen. They got to take him there, or or he's. There's a lot of trade up rumors that came this morning about Baltimore trying to move up for him. I think New England's going to be his home, and I think you're not going to like it. I will not like it. That is. I'm actually a little surprised that you like Houston that much. I love because Houston, I don't yeah. think Houston is a great destination for Bijan. It's just I think Balcow. Uh, yeah, if 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 Houston takes him, he will be. So, I mean, that's a guaranteed 300 touches. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, Mike and I once again share a destination. We both have him going to the Miami Dolphins. I mean, the Miami Dolphins that they got that need for speed, and Jameer Gibbs fits into that like perfection. Where Jameer Gibbs, you know, the size of 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 his frame is a legitimate issue for fantasy football purposes. But Miami's they're like, we don't need a 215 giant. Like we, we just need someone who's really fast and can catch the football. They, they've would, got to move up. Are you projecting they'd move up for him? I mean, maybe I into the, the top of the second round. Yeah. Like I, I don't think Gibbs goes in the first. I know that a lot of smoke has been going on uh, about that happening. But yeah, so I guess that's my concern if, about if, being wrong here. If Miami, I guess if Miami does take him, they probably have to move up at least a few spots in the second. Yeah, I mean, I I see that as a great heart pick because that would be such a great destination. It's also, mine. I don't know if that will be likely with them not having a first rounder and where they're drafting. I have Jameer Gibbs going to a team that is equally in the wrong spot for him. I've got him going to the Patriots. I'm changing my pick, by the way. Oh, oh live, live on the air. change. Yeah, I'm going to make a live change. Okay, yeah, what's yeah your, me what, too. What is I'm, you? I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going away from Miami. I'm going to go Philadelphia with the 30th pick. Ooh, okay. That makes sense. Um, so I, I've got him going to the Patriots. This is either a trade back, which is very patriot, you know, the Patriot way. Very patriotic. Very patriotic. <laughs> trade back from their 14, grab him later in the first, or – trade up from their second and get him. He's obviously got a connection with Bill O'Brien. Um, they That was his offensive coordinator at Alabama, and they have been talking about wanting a blue chip running back, and there's only two of them. Philly, New England, Miami, the three destinations for... I had, initially, I had put in the Rams because the Rams just seem like a team that... Yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They'll screw this up. They'll waste another second rounder on a running back. Uh, it's Zach Charbonnet, the last running back we're going to make a projection for here. I actually, all three destinations, I believe, are very reasonable. Mike, you have him going where? I got him going to the Dallas Cowboys. We got to slow the offense down. And Charbonnet would fit that mold of he's just big bodied guy who can compliment. Uh, just like Zeke, he, like, he'll be able to handle you know, that 250 plus touches every year. Jason, I've got him going to Chicago. I believe that they do need a running back. The people have said not to sleep on them drafting Bijan Robinson. They've got two picks in the second round. Um, and I think that would be a great destination for him. Yeah. They're getting a running back in the draft. You just don't know which one Atlanta is where I'm going to go for Zach Charbonnet. I think they resist the urge at eight. They shore up, uh, other parts of their team, and then they come back at 44 with Zach Charbonnet in the second round of the draft. On to the wide receiver room. We're going six names here. Jackson, Smith, and Jigba, Addison, Zay Flowers, Johnston, Hyatt, and Josh Downs, Jason's favorite player. I'm surprised he didn't go undrafted with Josh Downs. <laughs> well, no, no, no. He's he's getting drafted, uh, but in the sixth round. So. Oh, I see. Oh, my I see. goodness. Yeah. All right. Uh, the – pick that Mike and I have locked in together yeah. apparently see Mike I told you we just got back into town and threw his picks into the board so we're learning his picks for the very first time right now we both went with the Houston Texans so you're you're predicting Stroud at two yes uh JSN at 12 I I'm predicting Levis at two the JSN at 12 to me the biggest boost that the Houston Texans can do to their offense right now is get C.J. Stroud, the number one or number two quarterback, in, in my opinion. And then I don't know how many times we need to see this of college mm -hmm. quarterback players playing with a guy. It, look, I think Jackson Smith and Jigba can be a superstar in the NFL. If not a superstar, he can be a, 
uh, a top tier number one, it just just kick off your new regime knowing that these two players play extremely well together and they already have uh they already have the chemistry and the mind meld that Stroud or whoever your quarterback will be have will have to figure out over over time and you start things with JSN and Stroud and I okay. I think you're off to a really really nice start rebuilding. If Stroud goes number 2, I would expect JSN to go number 12. It's I think that would be a brilliant way to use those two picks. Uh his line right now the over under is 12 and a half. So you've got him going 12, I've got him going the other side of 12 and a half at 13 the trade up that Green Bay just made in the Aaron Rodgers deal to get ahead of the Patriots, I think, is for Is this just Jason. so Aaron Rodgers loses yeah. his freaking mind? It was like uh, how they never drafted first-round tackles for Russell Wilson. They uh -huh. get rid of Russell Wilson, and they make their offensive you line know, great. Makes, it's the same situation. I, I like the pick, though. I think it makes sense. You lost Alan Lazard to free agency. Um, you need Jordan Love to... You need to give him every tool he can to succeed for this fan base to be behind him. I don't. I, I would not. That, that's a bit of a shocker at first glance, but then I think it makes sense. But the move up from the Rogers trade, yeah, to get him, yeah, would it's be just outstanding. Like we need a Rogers game. Forty percent of the targets <laughs> vacated in Green Bay right now. So uh, Jordan Addison, who I think has the potential to be a real superstar at the NFL level, I believe that the Baltimore Ravens are going to take Jordan Addison. And I believe that they're going to commit this draft to convincing Lamar that they're committed to him. And that means equipping him. That means not running out what they tried to run out last year, wide receiver. Jordan Addison and Odell Beckham Jr. with a healthy Mark Andrews, maybe a running back in this draft as well to kind of persuade uh, him that they mean business. I'm going to go with the Baltimore Ravens at 22 for Jordan Addison, maybe a move up to get him. Yeah, I think you would have to have move to. up if they want to get him because he's going one spot ahead to the Chargers. Um, there, there's a great connection made. I think Hayden Weeks was the one that uh, that I saw uh, first Wink. mention this. He, uh, his wide receiver coach in college, he traveled with that. He left the school when his wide receiver coach left that school uh, and committed to where he landed, and then now that coach is with the chargers i think the chargers draft him i do as well zay flowers currently has a dk sportsbook over under of 22.5 in the draft i'm going with the buffalo bills i think that they're going to add a wide receiver if it's not deandre hopkins through trade i think it's going to be zay flowers at 27 Drops I've, a little bit yeah I've, I've got him going to the vikings who are in uh, need of replacing adam thielen and I, uh, man, what a good spot for anyone. If you go to the Vikings, I really like if, if one of these Jordan Addison, uh, Quentin Johnston, if you get to play across the field from Justin Jefferson, I think that's going to be a nice entry into the NFL. I have struggled mightily of where would Zay Flowers go? Um, cause on paper right now, I have him going to the Panthers. I like, I feel like Zay Flowers can fall into the second round and they're, they would need a wide receiver after they traded away DJ Moore in just, you know, we, we always want to equip our rookie quarterbacks. But seeing that the the, the DK Sportsbook at the 22 and a half, I think that would be uh, pretty wild. But whatever, I'm going to leave it in there. I'll have uh, the Panthers take Zay no, Flowers as he tumbles into the second. I think it's smart to, to look at these picks um, kind of with broad outcomes. I mean, there's a lot of mock drafts that have Quentin Johnston going as high as 12 and uh, 13. So it, it really comes down to what team – fell in love with what wide receiver you know Vegas is going to set these lines based on you know where they think they can go but sometimes you fall in love and you end up with Clyde going ahead of Jonathan Taylor and things you don't expect um so you went with the Panthers Quentin Johnston this is the Rams pick I see happening here you have to add a wide receiver um Allen Robinson didn't work out Robert Woods those days have uh, have long gone you've dealt with injuries with Cooper Cup he will be back but Matthew Stafford's healthy and this team is expected to, um, you know, hand the keys right back to him. He needs another weapon. I think it's going to be a big-bodied guy in Quentin Johnston, uh, yeah, which I think would happen at 36. Everything you said about equipping Lamar with your Addison pick, I would agree with. I think Addison is off the board at this point, so I've got Quentin Johnston going to the Ravens. And I have him going to 
The Giants. Who, I, I like that pick a lot. Who too uh, big? Too big for the Giants. <laughs> that, that, they like them small. That's why I put them to the Giants because, like, if you're, it's they're so strange because they have good players. Like, I think Wondell Robinson's going to be a good slot wide receiver. You picked up Paris Campbell, who I think might be a good slot wide receiver, and then they added Jamison Crowder, who's like an old, was a good slot wide receiver. And you just keep going it's like down. Twenty seven. Keep going down the list here. Yeah, but but no, I know. Been I know. in the league for a long time. No, he uses a walker. You, <laughs> it, you need height somewhere. So I I think they I think they make the move and they pick him up. Jalen Hyatt. Oh uh, man. I may or may not have a futures on him sliding into the first round. Oh. And so that's where I'm going at thirty one. I'm going Ooh. Kansas City. Jalen Hyatt, a player that I really love. That um. You know, is it's not a shared opinion among everybody, but I think Hyatt brings the speed and big playability that Patrick Mahomes will be able to take advantage of. They lost McCole Hardman. They've lost Tyreek Hill. They need a burner. Hyatt is, is is so impressive to me, and so I've got him going 31 to Kansas City. As do I. It feels like the most Chiefs type of a pick ever. Of I really his, think so. It, like his route tree is it limited? Well, I mean it was. Back in school, does that matter to the Chiefs when they say, "Hey, run that direction as fast as you can"? Yeah, if 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 you want to talk about a a team that can scheme for a skill set, it's Andy Reid and the Chiefs. I, I would like that pick. This was actually one of the hardest players for me. I have him going to the Titans. The, the, the Titans need someone to take the top off the defense. They need another wide receiver desperately. I don't love the pick in the sense that I've got them trading up. Uh, to that three spot for Stroud, which means they might not even have a second in that situation. So I doubt I can hit both of those, uh, but they clearly need some more offensive weapons, and he would be good. Josh Downs, the last wide receiver we're going to project here, and you know if this run happens, if JSN gets it going at wide receiver early at 12, um, and in my projection, Baltimore comes up to grab Addison ahead of the Chargers, then... The Chargers have got to make a selection, and I think it's Josh Downs. I could see that. Um, I've got him going to the Bills because it's the only team that I have seen uh, come out and basically be associated with him. And uh, By the so. way, over under four and a half wide receivers in round one is the number oh, right interesting. now. Interesting. I have Josh Downs going to the Titans. Uh, Jason laid it out. They need a wide receiver, and I said, okay, I'll give you one. <laughs> yeah, and let's wrap it up with some tight end picks here. Uh, I think the Cowboys grab Michael Mayer. In the first round, they need a tight end. I think it's yep. May I think it's gonna be Mayer. I have Michael Mayer being the heir apparent to TJ Hawkinson now that he's gone. The Lions have multiple first round picks, and I think their second pick is right in the range where he'll go. Lions love their first round tight ends. Uh I'm going mock draft chalk here. Mock chalk. Give me Michael Mayer to the Packers. All right, Dalton Kincaid out of Utah. Over under right now, pick twenty four and a half. And I've got him going at pick 28 to Cincinnati. As do I. Oh, okay. I would absolutely love that. I've got him going to another spot. Irv that Smith I would, love. would not. <laughs> right. Yeah, that, that would Irv stink. Irv Smith would love it. He would, know, <laughs> he would love it because the pressure to stay healthy would be awful. Oh, man. Irv Smith's got to get that Bengal tight end money. Yeah, well, I speaking of not getting tight end money, Dalton Schultz is gone yeah. from the Cowboys, and Dalton Kincaid says – Ooh, a little, I got this. Little knife twist. We we like. Yeah. We'll keep a Dalton yeah. on this roster. We really like Dalton at tight end. Oh boy, Darnell Washington. <laughs> We're matched up again. Andy. We are. I've, we got. We agree that the the Lions are going to be looking to pick up a tight end. I think he he fits the uh, he fits that high team mold, that athleticism, that ability. One hundred percent. He's going to chuck somebody off of the off of the line, maybe into the stands with that power. The production, not necessarily there, maybe more of a raw talent, but he, just like Anthony Richardson, he can, I mean. He's a monster. Oh, yes. Yeah, he has stolen someone's yeah. soul yeah. <laughs> in, in his life. And then the final selection here, Jason, where do you have him going? I've got him going to the Saints. They uh, they were bringing in Foster Moreau, so they, we know that they have looked at tight ends. Obviously, they were the ones that found his cancer, and yep. he was not able to uh, sign there. So Darnell Washington, a very physical two-way tight end uh, that can block for them. All right, and I know Kyle, you've been uh, you've been scanning these picks already, and you normally keep track of our draft predictions and 
who eliminates who. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how it turns out. Do you yeah. have any data already on these picks? I have to update a bunch. You guys switched it up on live. Is but. it my, my one pick of moving Gibbs to Philly? Uh, Mike updated. I think I, I got a. Did I'll, you make the change, Mike? He changed somebody to the Rams at one point. Okay. So we'll we'll update it. We'll get it out there on socials. Okay. That'll be fun. Let's jump into a little bit of draft day mailbag before Ooh. we close things down. Mailbag. mailbag. Instagram question from Cody. Best draft day traditions. Do you have any? Oh, it's watching draft day. <laughs> you Which, did that oh, again. Movie? I did get it out of the way, yeah. yeah. The, the week you, of. You actually watched oh, it? Oh, yeah. I mean, oh, gross. I, I was doing like home chores. I was like working on my bathroom and it was that on. Is, the, it is a chore, yes, uh, to watch draft day. And it was on in the master bedroom. So I'm like barely watching it. But oh, what, yeah. a, what a masterpiece. Um, best draft day traditions. Uh, look, food and food and watching the draft are really the only requirements I have. Yeah, for this year, it will be uh, coaching my son's football team. Mm. I made this realization earlier in the week, and it's very upset. Very, very upset. That's your draft day tradition? It is, is now. Is, 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 is missing my, some of the draft? Yeah, is my, my child's You're sporting. You're not missing all of it, are you? No. Okay. Just the majority. I need to be a father. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's all dumb. Right. Best and worst spot for JSN. I mean, it kind of leads into the predictions that we had, but not necessarily because, you know, the heart, right? What does the heart want for JSN? You want him to go into some place and be, you know, a long-term number one option. And so is there a is there a worst place for JSN? Because I think uh, the best place is to go into Kansas City. Yeah, I mean, that would be the best place. That would I don't know how he would get to 31 or how Kansas City would get up to get him, but that would be the best destination. Is Minnesota maybe the worst? No, I don't think no, so at all. I don't all. think, I think so Not the worst, no. I, I think that would be a great spot across mm. from uh, Justin Jefferson. But I think the worst. he'll never be better than Jefferson is my point. Like, yeah, but I'd, like you wouldn't pick that as his best spot because he'll never have the ceiling he could have somewhere else. I, I think the worst spot is New England. They Oh, gosh, yeah. that sounds terrible. They've been great at – ruining wide receivers yeah no you're right they just signed juju which is pretty much the same he's already type ruined of so player. that's perfect so i i would not like to see that and they have pretty high odds of taking him there um should he not go green bay or houston the two picks before all right instagram wants to uh wait hold on we have a brooks answer here yeah what are your biggest draft day memories from instagram mr gmitch <laughs> gmitch but 25. 25. Yeah. Uh, Brooks, you have a draft day memory you want to share? Yeah, I'll never forget. <clears throat> Excuse me. In 2005, Aaron Rodgers, the, the first round fall to pick 24. And that's when it was 15 minutes per pick. And Cool, man. Yeah, they just kept cutting to his camera waiting. And <laughs> oh, it's like four yeah. hours. He Didn't just... he have bleached tips at the time? I believe so. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why you fell. Yeah. Aaron. Yeah, that was... Um, I mean, falling to pick 24 when you could have been the number one pick overall. Yeah. That feels bad. It's my, my draft day memory that comes to mind first. It's the same that happens in real life. You remember your losses more than you remember your wins. And so my memory that comes to mind is celebrating the Josh Rosen <laughs> pick. Oh, man. Oh, Standing man. up and cheering. <laughs> and then, wow, that just is shameful. And I, I am, I will be man enough to admit that I celebrated that pick. Oh, Rogers, he didn't have the bleached tips, but he had the haircut. That belong that yeah, he needed that, bleached tips with that haircut. It did. It oh, is that a little soul patch I see? Yeah, yeah. That's how. That's what my <laughs> wedding picture looks like as well. <laughs> right around the same time period. Uh, I would say, yeah, I'm with Jason. It's the losses of uh, not drafting uh, Adrian Peterson. Yeah, that's going. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Levi Brown. I and think. you're like, fine. I guess we'll take. Wasn't he like the second or third tackle that year? Because uh, we, we traded back and didn't take Terrell Suggs too. Yeah, that was a really yeah. good choice. Get ready for another barn burner, guys. A reminder: ultimatedraftkit.com by Sunday. Get entered to win ultimate draft kit or ultimate draft week prizes. A listener league spot. Jalen Waddle signed jersey. DK Metcalf signed jersey. And we'll be live 6 p.m. Eastern on Friday. Go to ballerslive.com. Tune in. We'll recap the first round, assuming Jason's still with us. And uh, we'll look forward to rounds two and three and where the rest of these guys are going to go. I'm sure I'll be celebrating my draft prediction victory at that point. Of course. But it um, should be a lot of fun. Atlanta, Chicago, Philly. Atlanta, <laughs> Chicago, Philly. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Thanks. 
Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.